Lord, we are glad to be here, and I'm so grateful that you are the God who searches and rescues, and then you turn that around and invite us to do the same. Would you be present now? Would you help us know you are here? And that you do save the brokenhearted and those who are crushed in spirit. Thank you. In Jesus' good name we pray. Amen. 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 The, I heard about a ship captain who was sailing out near a deserted island. And he looks over. He sees this guy standing over there. Seems to be the only person on this little bitty island. So he... He wheels, he wheels whatever you do with a ship over to the shore, goes ashore to rescue this guy. And the guy, turns out, has been there for several years. And the captain notices there's three huts there. Like, three? Why three? So, what's the first hut, he asks. The, the stowaway survivor says, well, that's where I live. Ah, got it. Okay, makes good sense. And then... But what's the second hut for? Oh, that's where I go to church. <laughs> oh, excellent. Good. That's great. But what's what's the third third hut for? He said, That's the church I used to go to. <laughs> <laughs> I think possibly Possibly we run away from ourselves an awful lot. So when it comes to this search and rescue message, when I was reading Psalm 34, I did my usual as in always. Like, I don't want to preach on this. Nope, I don't like this. I got my scriptures out and I started marking out, I don't like this and what do you mean by this and I don't think this is. And God's like, so would you preach on this? Yeah, no. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so the reason I don't like this passage, or didn't, is because it starts out with this great deliverance from God. Like, I have, I, you saved me from this, and it's supposedly King David, and King David's gone and cra gone, pretended to be crazy, and, and so the king who's got him hostage says, well, get out of here, I don't want crazy here. And I'm like, I'm glad that works for you. It has not worked for me to pretend to be crazy for most of my life. So, But the I don't like it because there's all these people who are are not rescued. Who I, I don't like this passage because it's like, but you didn't rescue so-and-so, and you didn't rescue me, and you didn't rescue my friend, and you didn't rescue, and what is this about? I don't get this at all. I don't like it, God. Where are you, God? And then it became clear that I was asking the wrong starting question. Mm -hmm. um, when you are on a trail at a hiking at a preserve, you find a little sign with a map on it, and it says, what? You are here. And then it starts showing you where everything else is, but your first centering is, you are here. So today, as we think about search and rescue, I want to I wanna first figure out, like, where am I? And then, where is God? And this rescue, where is the rescue? that we're talking about. So where am I? Where is God? Where is the rescue after all? Where am I? What if you start with that question? Where are you? Like if I hadn't sat with that scripture, I would have not realized that I'm actually kind of an angry human being. <laughs> <laughs> I'm angry about this and I'm worried about that and I'm full of all this distress and whatever it is. Where are you on this map that's called your life? Where are you? I was in the car driving. I, I had, a friend of mine was having, I'd been trying to help her move, and two buyers broke their contracts with her. Mm -hmm. oh, wow. And she's already got everything set up and all these debt, you know, and contra a contract on the other end and all of this. 
And when I found out the second buyer had backed out, I said, okay, we need French fries and friends. Let's go. <laughs> and so I met her at this bottomless French fry place, um, which is one of my love languages. So that particular day, I'm driving there to meet her, and I'm full of all this distress. I'm, I'm, I'm actually worried about her and what's going to happen for her. But I'm also anxious about, like, what is next? What am I doing next? What is, what, how are we, what are we going forward? How are we doing all of this? And my phone rings. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. I'm, parked, I'm pulling into the parking lot. I look at the phone. It says, L.A. call. And I'm like, right, yeah, central casting is all over me. I'm sure that's that. So um, I thought, I'm just, this is a spam call. It's not a, and then I thought, well, nobody, actually nobody calls me from L.A., let alone spam calls. Mm -hmm. So maybe it, I'll just answer this phone. So I answer the call, and the woman on the other side says, Jane, do you remember me? I, and I'm, oh. It's a radio host. She did a show with me uh, about a thousand years ago, literally seven years ago. She remembered me after this particular book came out, and she, it was a good interview. And she's like, why would I reinvent guests? I'm going to bring her back. Hmm. And so I get off the phone and think, so where, where am I? I am in the middle of God's work that God is behind the scenes on this ridiculous capillary skew that is my life working behind those scenes. Where am I? And then if we take that to the next question, where are you, God, then isn't it so that God is here? I love the song that you sang for, your, for worship today for us. God is here. You are here. You are near. And yet we've got all these questions like the problem with trauma, the problem with pain, the problem with evil, the problem with war, the problem with all of these things is that the, the people who are hurt and they are not rescued feel insignificant and invisible. To say nothing of impotent. So I, 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 here I am in the car realizing actually I'm not invisible. God is seeing me. But how does God see me? Through others. Mm -hmm. Through other people. Because that person called me. Because life showed up knocking at your door. Because... So where is God? Well, God is here, but God is invisible. So what does that, where does that lead us in this place of invisibility and impotence and insignificance? The scripture, and I like the, uh, how Laura, Laura Daigle said, talked about God being out looking for her. And Jeremiah 31 is one of my favorite passages in the message because it says, Israel is out looking in the desert for a place to rest, and they meet God out looking for them. Mm -hmm. There is a rescue going on. Where is God? God is working behind the scenes in community. And the reason I didn't, the other reason, one of many reasons I didn't like Psalm 31, 34, is because it gives me this, this picture of um, this isolation of, like you see it on, on videos of these rock concert Christian worship services where all everybody is just here and you're singing and everybody's face is beautiful and probably everybody's white on those videos mm -hmm. and then you've got this gorgeous worship team and everything's fabulous um, and then everybody is locked into this box. The truth is that healing happens best in community. We begin to be found in community. That's where we are rescued. 99.9% .9 of the time where I have found, have been found by God, it's because God has found me through community. 
And so that's the next question. Where am I? Where is God? Where is community? The veterans who are hikers do not hike alone. Don't hike alone. Miracles rarely happen in isolation. So where is community? When Rich and I were looking at um, the, we were watching, okay, we were watching Spider-Man. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yes, I was studying it theologically. <laughs> we were watching Spider-Man. And, and the, I can't remember what the evil monster was who, who blew up and was coming to capture everybody. And in the middle of this is uh, Spider-Man comes through and, and this evil monster knocks over this guy who is carrying all these blueprints and this guy stands in the, in the he's in the street and the Spider-Man whisks in and picks him up and puts him over on the side and rescues him and, the, and then Spider-Man says what's your name and the guy who's been rescued with all of his blueprints says my name is Max Max Dillon and Spidey says, ah, Max, I'm so glad that I could save you because we need you. And then Spider-Man went off to do whatever he was going to do, the next salvation effort he was going to make, the next rescue. And here's Max saying, he saw me. He knew my name. He knew me. He knows me. Healing happens in community. That's where the rescue begins to come in for us. One of my friends has an eating disorder, had an eating disorder and was in therapy. She was afraid she was going to die. And her therapist said, you need to get to a 12-step program. You need to go to OA. So my friend goes to OA. She feels absolutely alone, absolutely invisible, and absolutely sick. Like, I am ill. This is making me sick. And she, she sits there feeling all alone. And they start the meeting. The person next to her says, I'm Harry and I have an eating disorder. And my friend looks at him like, oh. And then the next person says, I'm Alyssa and I have an eating disorder. Oh, you, you do. And then all around the table, people begin to tell their stories and they are all telling stories that involve this illness, but also involve hope and healing. Healing, yes, happens best in community, but it, and it does not happen alone, but it happens in our stories. Frederick Buechner said, in our stories, we begin to feel, we begin to sense God's presence. And if we, and we need to pay attention to our stories so that we can find God in our stories. And we need to be paying attention to other people's stories so that we can hear God in their stories. The search and the rescue goes all the way through our relationships. And then he says, if you are not hearing God in your story, then maybe it's a story that doesn't need to be told. Mm -hmm. Find God in your stories. That's what happened in that 12-step group. That's what happens when we see each other. We begin to tell our stories. When yesterday I was marching around doing something <laughs> and I hear this song from my childhood. By and by, when the morning comes, when the saints of God are gathered home, oh, we will tell the stories of how we've overcome. And I'm like, nope, stop right there. Stop, stop, stop. Nope, 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 nope. Don't wait till the sweet by and by. Mm -hmm. Tell the stories now. Now is where we tell our stories. So, so stop a minute. Find yourself on the map. Where are you? What's your pain, your fear, your anger? Name it. Wait with that. Now, 
Where is God? What story have you been told? Not that you are invisible and insignificant. Where is God? Where is God rescuing you? Where are you hearing God's rescue in someone else's story or in your own? Where are you? Where is God? Where is community? That Psalm 34 is a story of community. They are going to church and they are going to the synagogue, the temple, and they are praising God because one person says, God rescued me, and everybody else says, thanks be to God. Tell your stories. That's church. But it doesn't stop there. We tell our stories in community, and community helps us. But then we take our community outside. One of the other reasons I don't like this passage in chapter 34 is because there's this formulaic thing in the middle. It's like, if you want to be happy, if you want to have a good day, if you want to do good, if you want to be nice, no, that's not at all what it says. What it says is, if you want to live and see good days, stop being evil. Stop doing evil. Stop speaking evil. Shut your mouth on evil and do good. Turn away from bad to good. And then what does it say? Do good, seek peace, pursue it. It's not formulaic. It is about transformation. I am found, I am rescued, I am heard, I am seen. And then because I've changed through that, I take that out here and I do good, I do kindness, I am, I seek peace, I pursue it. And that keeps going throughout the world. That's how God rescues us. My friend Annie, who doesn't know she's my friend because she's actually just a best-selling author, and I've read all of her stuff, and it's very helpful to me. Um, my best friend. Um, I, but she, in her, her church, puts together these really nice swag bags, and they take those two people who are homeless. So she loads these bags in the back of her car, and then she's looking for this buddy Ben. Ben is this dapper, homeless gentleman, and, and, and she hasn't seen him in three weeks, so she's worried about him. Where is he? Where is he? So finally she sees him. Remember, she's got a bag in the back, so she grabs the bag, goes out, and sits next to him, and just sits there. And then she catches up on where he's been, what's happening for him. She's not going to just rescue him by handing him a bag through the window. She's going to rescue him by seeing him, by being kind to him. And then she process, she just starts, and these tissues, maybe these will help, your tissue, you know, and, and here's some, here's, here's some dental floss. You never know when you're gonna need dental floss. Maybe you can tie things together with this. I mean, here's some water. Here's deodorant, deodorant might help. Here's, and she just sits there with him. And then Ben says, Annie, you're so kind. And then he says, I sense God's movement in kindness. Kindness doesn't have to be expensive to sense God's movement. Maybe it's a smile. Maybe it's more than just how are you doing. Out on your way by, but it's a stop and it's a recognition. I see you. You're not invisible. Let me help you. <coughs> the redwood trees, if you've ever seen them, they're, they're beautiful, they're upright, they're strong, they're tall, and Underneath is this amazing root system that travels across the tops of the ground, 
you can see all those roots. And I think that it's partly on the surface because it absorbs the rain. When there is moisture in the air, those roots can absorb it. But I, it also, all those roots of all these trees interconnect and they begin to weave together so that there is this stability underneath all these tall, righteous looking trees. <coughs> and when one of the trees gets wounded, all those roots that are underneath the trees send nutrients to that tree that's wounded. And maybe that, maybe that's the rescue we've been looking for all along. Maybe that's how we make sense of Psalm 34. And my favorite verse in there, God is near to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. On this search and rescue, may we find ourselves, find God, find community, and then bring that community through kindness to this world. Our prayer requests will be a whole lot different if we live on kindness and not on guns. Lord Jesus, would you, would you change us as a result of the work you're doing in us? Would you help us see your rescue? Help us know that we are not invisible, we are not insignificant, and we are not impotent because of you in us and others near us. Would you help us be your community in this world so that we can help be part of your search and rescue. Amen. Amen.